Neil McPherson at Worksworth Gunroom. Now, earlier in the year, it's still 2019, just, um, we did a collaboration video with um, the gents from Bloke on the Range um, over in Switzerland. They came over here and we did various bits of shooting. Some of that's already been out there and uh, you may have seen some of those videos. But one of the things that we wanted to look at was the question of, is it better if you've got a bolt action service rifle to have a 10 round magazine or a five round magazine? We thought that was fairly clear. But there are people who will venture that a five round magazine is just as good as a 10 round and you may as well just have five because that's all you'll need. Seriously, people do think this. We thought otherwise, but in fairness, we decided to go and give it a proper test and that's what we've done. Now this is the, the wrap up, the discussion video. So what you need to do first is pause this and go and watch the main video that's over on Bloke's channel Link to it here, somewhere here, and um, pause as, go and watch that, come back, and then you'll see the discussion we had on the subject afterwards. Hope you find it all of great interest. Thanks a lot. Do it, oh, I thought you were counting us into sing. <laughs> well, which will make the uh... a wizard staff has a knob on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, gentlemen, sitting on a park bench. <laughs> Not going to say the second line. No, Cheers. no, because there's uh, nothing, uh, nothing of that nature around here to um, <laughs> view with three. bad intent or otherwise. Mm. Mm. Right. So, debrief. It's warm. Yeah, it's been warm. They were very sweaty. I'm wearing my body weight in water. Mm. Yep. <laughs> so clearly I, it wouldn't be possible in my case, but um, <laughs> there is a small lake behind us that's formed with uh, me standing there uh, perspiring. Mm. So, I think the obvious conclusion is that 10 rounds is, is, ten, is five mm. more than five, <laughs> mm. yep. which is fairly obvious, but um, a bit of serendipity in this gamey scenario meant there, wasn't, there weren't too many um, standing reloads going on, although you had quite a few, Neil. Uh, yes, I seem to. Um, but there's a reason for that. Reasons. <laughs> um, a different perspective. Um, yeah, well, I think there is a different perspective because you've shot lots of IPSC matches, um, and I think I shot a practical shotgun match once. Yeah. Um, I think we mentioned it earlier, but uh, many years ago. Yeah. So, in your IPSC scenario, yes, it's practical shooting. And I think they called it practical shooting because it, even back then it wasn't politically correct to call it combat shooting. Well, and the people that actually talk combat shooting and still do say it's just gamey nonsense. Mm. Which, to a large <coughs> degree, it is. But it's still, it's still high, high level, dynamic rifle, yeah, handgun, absolutely. shotgun skills. And a great, mm. a great, um, great form of competition and better than sitting in front of the uh, video game or whatever else people do. Mm. <laughs> Mm, it's certainly more realistic than, than that, but what we were just discussing off camera was that my view on, on reloads was a, an IPSC gamey type, like the prime directive is to reload <laughs> on the move to minimise time when you're, I mean, it's, when you're moving it's time when you're not doing something else. Yeah. So, I mean, and certainly with a detachable box magazine you, you hardly break your, break your stride, and okay, faffing with a charger is more faff yeah. but you hardly break your stride no and it's also i mean it's quite achievable um, the key thing is that in ipsc nobody's shooting back at you yes mm. um, exactly so if you've trained with, from a military perspective then you'd be looking at it more of i want as many rounds in my rifle before i break cover and move yeah. forward <laughs> which unless i'm really really compelled to go now yeah yeah which is which is why on that last run you did a 10 round reload from behind cover, whereas I would have done a five round reload, so I had rounds in the gun to take the close up target that I knew was there, 
and then I'd put the other five in on the move, I'd have a bit less resistance because I'd have had one less mm. round in, mm. and I'd have arrived at the next point with, with nine. And also, I mean, I, I hung up that charger, ended up with the rounds out of the charger, loading them manually. And something for people to know, we had a large number of chargers, as you probably guessed. Um, apart from one that was really, really grotty, we, we haven't picked them. They're not polished, they're not cleaned. They are, they've generally come out of some South African ammunition, packaged in the 1960s, um, shot about 15 years ago, and all the chargers put in a box. So they're not... They're not and, they, and they were used chargers when they went into the packaging, so mm. yeah. we've yeah. not finessed the chargers. Because they're, pre, they're the, uh, the pre-Second World War style of, uh, of charger with the small, small holes all the way down. Yeah. So they're quite, they're actually, they, they were probably loaded several times mm. in military service. Mm. And some of them are quite rough, or maybe. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, we I occasionally we get questions of what do we do to prep our chargers, and the answer is generally nothing. No, yeah. um, I don't know, I, it just seems that a lot of people have these supposed uh, bad Italian chargers which were probably made with, I mean my guess is that they were made with metric, with a metric grade of steel on tooling intended for an imperial thickness of steel or mm. something. Possibly. Probably, but they, they seem to be ultra tight and people can't get them to run, but th I mean that, those chargers, we didn't even clean them, we did nothing, we literally no. just put ammo in them. Um, also, I would like to give mad props to this privy for this batch. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. the rooms are radiused. Properly. Properly. Properly, properly. So even if it goes into the mag behind, you just push it hard and it goes. Uh, I mean, yeah. I, you felt a bit of resistance once and went, ooh, and I just said, shout it, yeah. slam it. Yeah. Um, so back at, the, back at the number of rounds plot, you wouldn't choose five. No. I mean, if you if you so had no reason why, why, yeah. What's the advantage of a magazine that holds five over a magazine that holds ten? Yeah, you can argue that the advantage of a magazine that holds ten is not huge over a magazine that holds five, and we've demonstrated that yeah. you can you can do it with a magazine that holds five. Yeah. Equally, we ended up often being compelled to move with practically you know one round and it's in the chamber i think that's the thing from the military perspective from an ipcsc well from point of view it probably doesn't matter so moving much. forward with one round on the mag well ipsc you're almost always putting two rounds on target mm. yeah so if you're moving with one round in the mag you're going to have to do a standing reload yeah no do you get penalties for a standing reload just, 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 just time just time, just time. Just time. Yeah. it costs yeah. you it's, okay it's, you want to be minimizing time time loss. i mean the okay no no one aside from in countries uh, where you can't have semi-autos and idiots like me would ever shoot a bolt action rifle in IPSC when they can shoot a semi-auto. Semi we, I mean, we keep coming up to IPSC, but just take it as a, as a general term for dynamic service yeah. rifle shooting that involves reloads rather than just, mm. it's a 10 round course of firing, you start with 10 rounds in the, mm. 10 rounds in the rifle. Um, the five rounds loaded start, it only makes a difference at the start, yeah, yep. make any because on that. after that, your your magazine is sort of oscillating between two, one, two, three rounds and six, seven, eight rounds. Mm. Really. And in the case where um, I, I'd done mine, I've got, <laughs> notwithstanding it's my own rifle, so <laughs> um, yeah, can't shoot. Um, I, I managed to miss three times, so I then got bang, bang, like, hmm. Right, put five in, well, I'll just put ten in. Mm. You've because, got the choice. Because you've got the option. Well, am I, am I now going to advance down here? Oh, look, there's one of them. Boom, so suddenly yep. I'm advancing with four rounds, or I'm advancing with nine rounds. Yeah, you, from a military perspective, you made the right choice. Yeah, you made the but right, I was slow. The right choice. Mm. Yeah. I was slow. I mean, I was probably a minute, was a minute behind you. Um, some terrible, terrible yeah, time. But, um, yeah. Um, I th well, I thought, I'll shoot the three, and I've got... A long sprint. Now that now you've done it twice already, mm. yeah, you know how much time it takes. All right, there's plenty of time for a loop, for a reload, and then you've got seven. Yeah, and from then on, yeah, uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, basically, once you are past the point at which you would have fired five, six rounds, so the first the mm. first target down the on the mm. range floor, it, there's no difference, yeah. and the re the rest of it's just academic. That's exactly the same. Mm. It's literally it's just that first that first bit, and it seems to be a no brainer to want to uh, to want to have ten in the mag mm. at, at at the start yeah. because and there's every possible opportunity yeah. you can have. Because 10 you in might the mag. suddenly need to fire six or more <laughs> rounds. Yeah. 
yeah and then and then you want to top it top it up so at the first opportunity you've got to top it up once you can so if you've got five four three two one zero rounds you, you you've got the choice to whack in another one mm. I mean, people will say, okay, an advantage of a five-round magazine is that it can be generally more reliable than a ten, which really, you know. really, well, <laughs> is that I a mean, thing? Well, the, the one we the one we used, we'd had to put a wooden block in the bottom yeah. because of the absence of the Mauser, the promised Mauser. Um, it's nobody, um, <laughs> it, nobody who offered a Mauser on the um, on the sort of Facebook and YouTube and so on is is to blame. It. Um, from outside of that uh, yeah. realm, but um, yeah, we didn't get the Mauser, so we put the wooden block in. We did have some difficulties with that. Yeah, it was not designed. The, 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 the yeah. spring geometry is no, wrong it, for it. It's mm -hmm. not designed to be to stick yeah. a wooden block in it. Yeah, um, I mean, they are yeah. fundamentally they are a detachable magazine. Mm. So if you if you do if you do do something wrong and bend the lips mm. or something like that, and the and, and the springs in these are all seventy plus years old as well, mm -hmm. and it's like yeah, it's it's a detachable magazine. There are there are options on the market and we're going to look at all the options on the market for a replacement magazine there's um i mean and then they were designed to feed spits or ammunition so some some of the fatter hunting bullets can can damage the feed lips mm. there's actually quite a lot of variety in the feed lips how long they are and if you've got ones that are a bit longer and then you try and force some fat bullets up through them you bend them up mm. and then and then you'll get feed jams which okay you don't get with uh, with integrally machined um, magazine box yeah. feed feed lips mm. but yeah. I mean in service they would only ever be, have been fed on Mark 7 or Mark 8 Z but these number 4 yeah, number 4 yeah, number fours, yeah. For sure. and, uh, and SMLEs would only their magazines are, are designed to run both Mark 6 round nose and, and Mark 7 mm. that's why the, the, the feed geometry is a little bit different in them um, but they're they're generally like hundred year old springs. I mean, mm. you can't you can't really yeah. fault a hundred year old <laughs> piece of spring steel made no. under wartime conditions for for no. being a bit weak. Absolutely, um, no. much later. And um, other points on on the rifle um, that should be noted, I think, we all used the battle sights exclusively. Nobody mm. flipped. Yep. Nobody felt the need to flip the rear sight up to have a small. Although aperture. maybe I should have done on that last <laughs> run. <laughs> but would that? I mean, these these targets are seriously hard to see. Yeah. And do you do you think? Had you flipped it up, do you think that would have reduced your contrast? Not that there is any contrast. I mean, it's like field grey on a... Mm. No, I mean, they are difficult to see. I, I don't think... I wasn't really struggling with the sight picture. I think I had to... I just aimed... I had to adjust my point of aim. Yeah. I had to adjust my point of aim down. I mean, habitually with this, you know, for the mo most part, it's quite unusual for me to have ever... I mean, I've had this rifle, what, 15-odd years. Yeah. Um, quite unusual to shoot it at 100. Yeah quite unusual nowadays um, more likely to be shot from 300 back to 600 mm -hmm. and invariably shot slow fire mm -hmm. and probably shot on you know at, at the worst target it would be shot on a figure 11 so for those unfamiliar it's a sand coloured charging man target usually against the sand backdrop of, um, of a conventional gallery range so maybe not great this contrast but quite good against a black foresight mm -hmm. uh, yeah. whereas here we've got a grey, dark grey really, yeah. slate grey almost, uh, just a natural steel target. You've got your black battle site. We haven't, we haven't played games like sutting up our battle sites, you know. It's no. just, no, um, and use we all, what you came with. We all shot the whole thing with the, uh, with the um, point two of an inch big battle sites and yeah. never felt any need to... Uh, no to do otherwise I mean I've shown in earlier videos I shot them at 300 meters like that and you can shoot perfectly yeah. well you just it's a psychological thing you just got to understand that you can and to make sure that you put the, uh, put yeah. the front I mean, sight the in the principles of, of marksmanship mm. don't go away no and you've got to do it and certainly close up <laughs> when we were at about 60 meters on the on the closer ones I, I there were a few where I was feeling in the zone and I was practically snap shooting I was just looking through the rear sight and then as the front sight came across the target mm. which is reasonably large at that, yeah, at that yeah. distance yeah. I was just going bang and mm. then being slightly surprised to hear a ding and, and then doing <laughs> yeah. the same thing again yeah. being slightly surprised yeah. to hear a ding but at those ranges that is snap shooting yeah, I mean you know if, if you're on your hind legs well again are we talking from a military perspective or are we talking from yeah. a you know a game perspective but we're, we're evaluating a military rifle so yeah. uh, we're, we're looking at something and going uh, you know otherwise the question would be <laughs> 
which um, ancient bolt action rifle is the best thing for shooting competitions with? <laughs> yeah. uh, and you know, that's, that's a different matter, a different What's question altogether, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Chappie has not spent much time with the number four, no, at all. Um, wait, up, to, up to today, how much have well, I had one in Holland for not very long. Oh, yeah, I bought it off you exactly, <laughs> and it was not fantastic. That one has a stocking up issue, yeah. I, I think, tried to fix. I think that's it. Yeah. And that was it. And that was it. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, what was your what was your impression? Because you were running it really very very well. Yeah, that was I fine. I mean, I must say that there was a lot of taking the butt out of the shoulder. Yes. There will be punishment <laughs> beatings <laughs> delivered later. For that. We should know. I mean, the one you were using exclusively was a short stocked um, yeah. example. Mm. Um, this is a, this is a standard length stock. This is my own. When we did the one with the blocked mag because of the feed issues, as we've discussed. I ran that one as well. Um, I found it had got a lighter trigger, which caught me out. But <laughs> interestingly, it was short stocked. Did I even notice? No. No, no. not really. Actually, I mean, I've got long, I've got broad shoulders and long gangly arms. Mm. And uh, I'd always had the I'm impression I wanted a... And broader. <laughs> broad. <laughs> wanted a long butt. And my, my long branch is a short butt. And I've got a long butt. I haven't fitted it yet because I keep I keep thinking, okay, actually I don't have to move my head that much, mm. and I'm kind of and I'm kind of used to it now. And in Holland, I'm in Holland and Switzerland, I'm only shooting it prone. So yeah. does it really make that much of a difference? And to be to 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 be honest, had I shot yours instead of Paul's the short butt, probably wouldn't have made. It's only half an inch. It's only half an inch yeah. difference. Yeah. Um, Mm. Also, um, I mean, from that perspective, you're talking. About, I mean, the reason we've done this here is because we can do this here. Um, yeah. You know, fortunately, I mean, at the Evely Estate, um, Guy and Leslie have set up a range, and they've also got a huge clay ground that's off in the background and a nice little fishing lake. It's not really a pool of my sweat. Um, <laughs> could be. That's contributed could be, to it. Could be. I probably had it to it. It's topped up. Um, and yeah, you know, we can book this range and come and do it, which is. Why are you not doing this in Switzerland? Yeah, I mean there aren't ranges like this in Switzerland because we're not allowed to shoot into the dirt as of next year, and all the ranges mm. are being converted. So we're quite limited in what we can do. We certainly couldn't set up anything like this. So thank you very much, Guy, for allowing us well, to come here yeah. and, uh, and shoot that. Any yeah. other points? We've blathered on for a long time. Um, mm. Ammunition retention in cartridge Car carriers. Car yes, um, we all okay. lost so, some on the way. Yeah. So, so we all know that we must. <laughs> Always fasten our pouches before moving off, off. Well, I don't suppose that's an IPSC thing, is it either? No. But significantly, I, I found with these, I mean, I, I put this set together to do civilian service rifle years ago, and I don't really do it now. But, um, yeah, some of them stay fastened, some of them don't. Yeah. But significantly, unlike many other designs of pouches, if you forget which you may well do if you're running around hot and sweaty with a rifle, um, they have no natural tendency to want to keep the ammunition in them at all. No, I think so we all lost rounds, yeah, didn't we? They've just got a, a khaki web would just say it's a plain flap, it's not a box lid. If they just mm. had a slight box lid to them, yeah, uh, it would at least... The, well, um, also, the, the way the shape is, is a wedge. Yeah, it's, well, it does, it does hold hold the cartridges but was you see with bounding around yeah, it, yeah. mechanically yeah. it's designed to eject them yeah, yeah. exactly it, it's just going to keep um i mean these weren't it. these weren't for infantry use these were for non-infantry armed with the rifle um infantry had the big uh, the big pouches and loaded from bandoliers which are also quite awful but are better at probably better at retention of the uh, of the rounds the best design of all from a from this kind of perspective is the american uh, the American cartridge belts with the internal strap that holds the second charger. Um, right. right. They, are, they are infinitely superior. Um, plus you've got lots of them. Mm. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a rifleman's belt where, where the primary role of the rifleman is to, is to fire his rifle. Whereas the 37 pattern equipment is, uh, is a modular system designed around the rifleman's role being to carry brain guns and stay under cover <laughs> as much as possible before closing in with the bayonet and some uh, what the French would call élan. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Yes. 
Yeah, there's a cliche about uh, they don't like it up and then. Uh... <laughs> yes, we didn't know we were even going to go there. Yeah, but um, off you go. Yes, you, 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 you watch the old training films, and uh, and it's 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 bring gun and bayonet focus basically, and uh, the the carriage of the carriage of ammunition for the infantryman is a is a secondary consideration, partly because he's got a ten round magazine. Even if it's, uh, <laughs> um, How many rounds do you have in that magazine? Is it um, ten? <laughs> Possibly depends on if he's loading as as doctrine or as uh, or as any sensible person would. Mm. So that'd be ten then, probably. Maybe even right. eleven if he's lucky. <laughs> yeah, like me. <laughs> I just honestly, I just press rounds in until it wouldn't take any more. I was wondering why there was a bit of resistance on the first mm. one. Now I know it was eleven. These go to eleven. Yeah. How many? <laughs> Music references of <laughs> <laughs> makes a change from sexually innuendo. <laughs> right. Anyway, people to thank so much. Neil of the Worksworth Gun Room. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, gentlemen. We have already um, Guy Field Guy. and Leslie Field, who who run the Evely Estate here, for uh, accommodating us and um, and letting us put up our new steel targets, which we've done for this. Yeah. Paul, thank you very much for this rifle which is still warm <laughs> it has had a lot of ammunition through it today and it, it's, uh, it's run in now paul yes <laughs> um it did get a bit of sticky sticky extraction occasionally well, you seem to suffer from it more than me I, yeah but maybe i'm putting more elong into it than you well you're used to working it yeah so maybe i'm, well, I'm doing some more angle exactly. I, I, sus I, sus I suspect that you were committing the sin of babying rowan would uh babying no you weren't, actually, you weren't babying too much, but uh, you could have given it more elan mm. opening the bolt. But I certainly, I have very few hard extractions on it. Um, I'm used, to, I'm used to my ultra smooth Master Thirty Six. Not, uh, not, 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 not the first, not the second, not the first one. The, the first one. Yeah, the which, first which one. Is, yeah, that one's that one's nice. The second <laughs> one needs persuasion. Yeah. Uh, who we, else? Well, we can recommend the ammunition. It was um, yeah, yeah. Privy. Yeah, we've already said that. Thank, and, um, thank you, Privy, for <laughs> making rim jam proof ammunition this time. Thank you so much, <laughs> um, patrons. Thank you so much for paying to get us out here. Thank you very much for paying for the ammunition. Thank you very much for paying for the steel targets, which we will hopefully be back again to <laughs> use on uh, on other occasions. Uh, we really could not have done this. This is the single most expensive project that we have done on Bloke <laughs> on the Range uh, by. Yeah. Miles. We it's probably the most expensive project that Worksworth Gun Room's done <laughs> over a video as well. It's been. Um, and thank you, Neil, for the enormous jerry can of water. Yes. Yes. Without, <laughs> we've, um, without the jerry can of water, I think I'm, I'm on my about fifth bottle. Yeah. Fifth two no pint bottle. So I've put ten pints through and um, yeah. haven't. Um, it's just gone, gone in. Yeah. Let's we'll, go, uh, that. we'll go to fizzy fluids. Uh, and thank you for later. watching if you survived this far through all our repetitive blather. So. See you next time. Bye.